So we are two and a half weeks or so away from E3. There is a lot of excitement right now around Nintendo, but specifically Zelda, because we know we are in an anniversary year for Zelda. They've already started some of the celebration, I'll say, with Skyward Sword, the Amiibo, uh, all that stuff being shown off. And a lot of people are interested and excited in what Nintendo has in store for us with Breath of the Wild 2. But... It seems like there's a lot of talk with Zelda right now because we're still expecting quite a bit of stuff from Nintendo for the 35th anniversary coming up after just getting done with the Mario 35th anniversary. So I thought it's Sunday. Hey, we'll bring in Nate and we'll talk a bit about the 35th anniversary and some of the things we, we think could happen and, and maybe just some some hopes of what Nintendo has in store for us. Nate, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, enjoying some pre-summer heat high 80s today and watching the Yankees take on the White Sox and the Yankees continue a historic streak of their starting pitching not giving up an earned run and it happened again today their starting pitcher didn't give up an earned run in six innings pitched but the bullpen came in and promptly gave up a two-run home run to the White Sox so that's a little disappointing but the Yankees have the lead 3-2 and are well on their way to winning another series okay good 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 to hear good to hear <laughs> so we, we have like i said zelda 35 coming up here uh, but i thought we'd start with how do we feel about that mario or the mario 35th anniversary there nate after we just got done with it basically at the end of this fiscal year capping everything off with <laughs> bowser's fury and the the themed nintendo switch release with the red dock that's the first full yeah. color dock that we've had uh, other than like the gray one or grayish black one that we have from nintendo I would say that due to COVID, it didn't really feel like a major celebration in terms of the Mario franchise, especially coming from a company like Nintendo. We had the 3D All-Stars collection. We had Mario 35th, which was promptly taken away from us. And, you know, you had the Lego and a lot of merchandise stuff. But I never really felt it was really a celebration of the Mario franchise in, you know, Overall, it kind of just felt like staggered releases that happened to be Mario themed. And I mean, I would look at the quality of the products that were introduced over the span of this 35th anniversary, and they were all, you know, top notch quality. I just didn't really feel as though it was a major celebration of the franchise and what it represents in terms of like video game history. It felt like they, they had to crush it all together pretty quick, too. I mean, they, they we had mentioned before that the 3D All-Stars collection was announced, and then it was released, like, three or four weeks later or something. So super, yeah. super quick, which for retailers, that had to have been really frustrating to deal with all of that and get it all worked out. But with everything that was going on last year and the fact that we heard about that 3D collection way in advance, that was in May mm -hmm. when it really broke, but even before that, it was kind of being talked about a bit. It, it seemed like Nintendo maybe wanted to even announce it around e3 time it's very possible that they could yeah. have wanted to do that instead it, it seemed like a lot of things got thrown into flux and they were like well we got to get it out like for this holiday so we're going to announce it and then it's coming out in a couple of weeks so uh, i i almost wonder if if now because the zelda anniversary is uh maybe they've become more used to remote work or at least set up uh, better guidelines and, and structure for how to deal with it that they will have a bit of a better plan for the zelda 35 anniversary compared to what they did with the mario one that just felt kind of like i said last minute and scattered at, at times but for the most part I, I looked at the mario 35 and i thought it was i thought it was all right because of the stuff they did even outside of games the lego collaboration a lot of the merchandise and clothing and all this like they did a lot of stuff even outside of video games it's a shame that the movie wasn't around for the anniversary I, I guess we're going to hear more about that within the year like in the next year or so we'll hear more about it but like if they could have lined all of that up that would have been pretty impressive uh but it just didn't didn't really work out there so i guess now because we're almost halfway through the year i mean we're about to go into june with e3 people are starting to think okay nintendo is going to get this zelda stuff going here soon even outside of skyward sword hd which i mean i, I would assume they're considering that part of the the celebration, even though they haven't mentioned the anniversary yet with that. If you notice, they haven't mentioned anything about that when they talked about Skyward Sword HD, <laughs> the Amiibo, uh, nothing. So I I assume that when they do finally talk about it, they're going to have a big blowout event, and that's what a lot of people are expecting. But do we think it's going to be E3? E3 is in two and a half weeks, uh, and, I mean, that seems like a good time to at least talk something, Zelda, but is that, like, 
the big Zelda event that everyone's looking towards? If I were Nintendo, yes, I would use June and E3 as the big kickoff point for a Zelda anniversary. And there were some reports last year that came out that said Nintendo had been planning to use E3 for their Mario celebration. Then obviously E3 was canceled due to COVID. And I would imagine oh, I didn't even that, think of that. They would have they would have had a whole Mario setup and everything at E3. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. man, that would have been a really cool like like booth set up by it because they you know they ran out a large chunk of the floor. Oh. They pro I mean it could have been like a mini theme park, which you know they have out in Japan. They could have just built that, that little set for that where you would have oh, all those the, the Mario you know worlds and pipes and enemies they would have done like stuff. mario through the years where you, maybe they have things themed yeah. around like the original mario then the mario 2 then like the three and then world oh yeah all right <laughs> it could have been something really you know really special had that happened and you know i think with covid and how quickly they had to adjust their planning for that type of event that's why we saw like the staggered release and announcement timing for a lot of the mario stuff but i think with zelda They've learned from that. They've been able to adjust. So I would come into E3 and say, we want to talk about Zelda in a big way. So maybe the theme of an E3 Direct would primarily be about the Zelda franchise. So you can come out, you talk about Breath of the Wild 2. That's the one mm -hmm. thing everyone wants to hear about. Have a little more about Skyward Sword. If you are planning to release Wind Waker HD with Twilight Princess in a bundle this year, you make mention of that. And then, you know, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. You make mention of that too. So, you, you think they just go all out at E three? Then if they if they really wanted yeah. to do that, they just like the entire presentation is like, here's a bunch of Zelda stuff, and then we have two D Metroid. We'll see you later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if I were Nintendo, that's how I would approach it. With mm. Mario, you kind of had that fallback option of his actual anniversary or birthday isn't until September. So if we have to wait until September, mm. we can. The problem with Zelda is. Zelda's birthday was February. Yeah, that's true. It was while the Mario one was going on still technically. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think they're going to wait until next February, you know, of 2022 to introduce something meaningful mm. for this anniversary because then you only have, what, seven weeks of, you know, a celebration before you would essentially cut it off at the end of the fiscal year. So I think this time they're going to use June as that kickoff point. And if we take it as the fiscal year, then... You know, we're still somewhat early overall in terms of the year for the celebration. So you have many months you can celebrate the Zelda franchise moving forward. That's a good point. But basically when E3 starts, we'll have been a little over two, yeah, like two and a half months into the fiscal year then. Mm -hmm. So that, that that makes sense in that regard. If they're like, oh, yeah, the, the anniversary is going to basically run the fiscal year. I guess the first stop would be Skyward Sword and then this Amiibo coming out here and then we, we would roll into some other releases and merchandise i'm sure and there were talks for the when did we hear about that mobile game for zelda that was years ago wasn't it it certainly I, feels like years ago like i'm thinking of all these things they could do and then i realize it, it's nintendo and they, they might do some weird stuff on top of that even all right so the the thing that's been rumored the the most and seems very almost confirmed at this point based on how many places we're talking about it very similar from what i remember to how people were talking about the Mario three collection is the wind waker and twilight princess collection basically just being on, on a single cartridge, I assume, or single download. Uh, and Nintendo would put that out there. That being one of the releases. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's something that everyone seems to agree on right now is, is most likely going to be a thing. Uh, but the other, the other one that's coming up a lot is the idea of Ocarina of time and Majora's mask getting mm -hmm. some sort of HD trim, like how we got with like the 3DS, for example, but even probably more upscaled and smoothed out, maybe some extra visual effects to it. But that that wouldn't be its own release. What it, they would just do a, a, they would just do Majora's Mask and Ocarina on that one cartridge and that would be a $6 game. See, that's a really tough product to approach. And it's something like MVG and I have talked about several times in the last few months. And like, I do believe we'll see Ocarina in Majora's Mask in some form, mm. but they could go about this in a number of ways. Could they potentially introduce, let's say, N64 games to Nintendo Switch Online and have Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask be the introductory titles? Mm, that'd be good. Or do you HD them with the emulator that we saw them use for Mario 64 in the 3D All-Stars collection? But yeah. mm. that has its own caveat. 
it would mean we're getting the N64 originals and we're not going to have an upscaled version of the 3DS remasters or remakes, depending on how you want to classify them. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm looking at this. I'm saying, okay, they have Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and then we're talking about like Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. Mm. That would they they would they put that all in one cartridge, all four of those games? No, not not Nintendo. They know that is way too much value to give you at sixty dollars. Would those they are... put all of that on one cartridge and sell to you for six months? Yes. <laughs> yes I'm trying would. to think. I'm trying to think of ways <laughs> they could make this work because the idea of that limited release does come up. But if they want to do Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, mm-hmm. what, could they package some other Zelda games in there? Like, could they get some of the handheld ones involved along with that? Because I mean, technically, those are you know we say they're from the 3ds. Even could they get like. Uh, like one of the Oracle or ages or seasons thrown in there. Could they get Minish cap and just throw that on there? Uh, just something else to make it. Okay. So it's three games, you know, Ocarina of time, Majora's mask, and then like Minish cap. Would that make it feel like a $60 game then if they wanted to do it? Maybe, but it, it's tough. Cause a lot of people feel like they don't view the handheld games as, I guess you'd say real mainline Zelda games. Because when we saw Link's Awakening come to Switch, one of the big topics was, this isn't worth $60. It didn't matter how much visual improvement, how many changes, and the amount of work they put into the release, people still looked at it as that Game Boy game. And if I'm Nintendo, and I want to create that perception of great value, you may have to go even further. You have to do maybe Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Minish Cap, um a link between worlds like you really have to make this an elaborate collection and knowing nintendo there's just there's too much value with these titles to really package that many games for a 60 dollar bundle but i could see something like the twilight princess wind waker hd being a limited release maybe even ocarina of time and you know majora's mask being a limited release could they could they treat those separately like they did the the Fire Emblem game they put out for like six or seven dollars? Yes. Maybe those just drop on the eShop separately, mm-hmm. and it's like they're gone in six months or something like that. That probably makes the most sense from Nintendo's perspective. If here we go, let's say you know Ocarina of Time and Jorah's Mask Shadow Drop at E3, they're available until the end of the fiscal year. They're just HD versions of the N sixty four games. Let's say fifteen, maybe twenty dollars a piece. There's no other changes, no quality of life changes. It is a pure port just with, you know, an HD coat of paint. That probably makes sense to Nintendo because it probably wasn't a huge effort. It didn't cost much to do. And you're going to charge us not quite a premium, but you're charging more than, you know, you probably should. And it's a nice solution, especially if you're not going to bring N64 games to Nintendo Switch Online in the foreseeable future. So we have obviously a lot of games that people are assuming could be done by Nintendo, whether they do them or not. That's that's hard to say. But I mean, Breath of the Wild 2 is obviously I think a lot of us see as like the big the big blowout for this celebration. The, the You know, the big brand new Zelda yes. game that's been worked on for quite a while now. I mean, think about it. it's been I mean, Breath of the Wild came out with the switch. So mm-hmm. it, it's been a bit, you know, and I mean, this is a direct <laughs> sequel, right? The Breath of the Wild. So. It yeah. does seem like a lot of the work being put into this is on top of what they had with Breath of the Wild already, you know, sort of. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I, a lot of people are expecting quite a bit from this game. So I feel like if it is a game that it, a lot of people are now thinking is in 2022, maybe that is a March 2022 release. It's going to coincide with Breath of the Wild when that released years and years ago, and it's going to wrap up the entire celebration at the end of the fiscal year. It would be the perfect cherry on top for the anniversary year if they can make that happen so do you think we get a special edition system then with it you do the whole thing you know all these you do a bunch of games a lot of remasters releases obviously that's what we kind of expect with anniversaries like these and then you do the special edition system i assume it wouldn't be a switch light i would assume it would be something with either a newer switch revision if they want to go that route or the Mm -hmm. the switch now that we have but they completely like the back has etchings on it the joy cons are all etched up correctly and nice and all of this kind of like what we got with the mario switch where that you know looks Mm -hmm. way different something like that yeah i definitely see a zelda branded switch releasing sometime during this anniversary year it's just a question of when would we see it would they want to position it for 
you know, holiday sales or would they hold it for Breath of the Wild 2's hopeful early 2022 launch? But as you brought up, a lot of people are anticipating Breath of the Wild 2 would be a launch title that coincides with the Switch revision. And with brand new hardware like that, especially when we know where there's a chip shortage and a lot of supply issues, would you risk making the revision launch with you know a special Zelda brand, or do you go to the standard Switch that we have now and decorate it, make it fancy? I think I would launch a Zelda brand Switch this holiday just to drive mm. some holiday sales. Because you could do that, yeah. You could do that, and right now we're kind of operating under the idea of Nintendo's potential holiday title right now is solely Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes. I think just like a just like a gold switch light or something like that. A gold switch light would probably be a good idea, and then I think I would do like a blue switch hybrid for the mm. joy. Well, I guess you can't do the blue because you're gonna have those Joy Cons come out, so you don't want people to get mad. Yeah, at the $80 I was thinking like kind of how they had that Wii U that was like black with gold etching and stuff, and it was the Zelda like something like oh, yeah, the Wind Waker, yep. something standard like that put out there. They could do the hybrid one. They could do. I mean, they seem to like doing these switch lights. A lot, so maybe maybe that to them is easier because it's it's less plastics involved. There's not a controllers attached to it and a dock and all. I assume in the factory level, that's a lot easier to be like, all right, special edition switch light. You know, let's let's get the one big piece of plastic that's on the back and and kind of draw that up and make it look nice. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm leaning towards a switch light, especially if we get these remasters of say an Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and others. Uh, maybe they maybe they do something cool and they put it alongside of like Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask or something like that, and it's has a theme around there and there's a lot of cool stuff they could do with this and i hope they don't nintendo it up and actually do some really cool stuff with it (laughs) but always nintendo it up though i i i do kind of lean towards the idea of this getting its own event outside of e3 uh mostly because it could give them one last big push for skyward sword let's say they do an event in july before skyward sword comes out uh detached completely from e3 and maybe they just talk about breath of the wild 2 at e3 and then they can do a big blowout thing for Zelda, get everyone super hyped, and they're like, oh yeah, there's a Zelda game coming out in like a week. Skyward Sword, go get it. All right, now, you know, here's another Amiibo with quality of life behind it. Make sure you buy that too. And uh, and and they really make a big push for Skyward Sword because when they first showed off Skyward Sword, they were trying to even sell it as like something attached to Breath of the Wild. They're like, there's a stamina system. It's like Breath of the Wild, right? Yes. <laughs> so, I, I, the big marketing push is everything like, hey, remember that sale you use in Breath of the Wild? We introduced it in Skyward Sword. Like, <laughs> okay. I kind of feel like they, even they know, they're like, uh, yeah, this wasn't like the most, like the best well received 3D Zelda game. So maybe we should push it just a little bit more. And then they can detach completely from E3. And I mean, let's be real. If there, if there's like a big blot of Zelda stuff at E3, like that 2D Metroid is getting overshadowed badly. Oh, absolutely. Even you even run the risk loosely of overshadowing Skyward Sword. If you know there's oh, better yeah. Zelda games coming out later in the year, yeah. you might now hesitate and say, I'm not going to spend $60 on Skyward Sword when I can get Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD for $60 in, let's just say, October. Yeah. Yep. That's why that's why I'm thinking they get that event close to Skyward Sword so they get you hyped up just before it comes out and you're like, "Well, I need something Zelda related." And it's like, oh, "It's coming out. Go check that out." So, uh, yeah, whereas if they do it at E3 and there's like a whole month or so of you be able to think about what you're going to do with with uh, your purchasing in video games, it's like I I feel like some people might be like, "Eh, Skyward Sword, maybe I'll wait for that one." Um, but I I feel like an event on its own would be really cool. Uh, just so it doesn't feel like it's lumped in with other stuff at E3 and it kind of gives them the, the the anniversary event that everyone really wants because they did an anniversary event with Mario, Mario 35 one. So true. I so, thought yeah. about, uh, go, yeah, yeah. I thought about um, what they could do as like a Nintendo online thing because they did it with Mario 35 and that was limited, which I mean, sure, I guess. I mean, this would probably be limited, too. I really think it'd be cool if they got the Satellaview games. I brought them over. It was just oh, Nintendo man. Switch Online, right? This <laughs> like It was the one that had, like, the four weeks or whatever, and they figure out a way to make it maybe uh, work with Nintendo Switch Online with multiplayer or something. Like, they could do some cool stuff with it if they wanted to uh, or just build off of that. Maybe not necessarily bring the exact same thing over, but kind of a similar idea of it working with, like, certain times as you go through. Um, but like that would be a cool idea if they did if they did something with that for the Nintendo Switch Online as a limited 
run thing. That's it's just free, you know, part of the Nintendo Switch Online stuff. Yeah, they'll they'll do something with Nintendo Switch Online. It's kind of been their you know mo of late, and I mean, I guess you could still make a Zelda thirty fifth in the similar vein as what we saw from Mario thirty five, where maybe it's Zelda two when you're walking around and you're stabbing enemies, and as you're killing them. They appear in your map and i only use zelda 2 as the example because that was a side scroller yeah so they could do something unique like that i'm sure we'll see some sort of nintendo switch online limited release that celebrates zelda in some weird kooky way but they definitely have a lot of avenues they could explore for such a product Mm, yeah i'm uh, i'm looking forward to what they come up with because that that is something i i feel like they're going to be very creative with is like a battle royale zelda or something with the nintendo switch online because they they come up with some interesting stuff already with mario 35 so uh, i think that would be really cool uh to see that so i guess do at the end of it do we think when we look back on both these you think the zelda or the mario anniversary will be better overall overall i think the zelda anniversary will be better and i think a mm-hmm. large part of that is going to come down to Breath of the Wild 2. It's a highly anticipated release. It's something everyone is, you know, hungry for more information on. You want to see a new trailer. You want to get some gameplay information. And that's one of the big things that we're lacking from the Mario 35th is that we didn't really have a big brand new Mario release. We had Bowser's Fury, but, you know, it it was just attached to 3D World, whereas Breath of the Wild 2 is a brand new Zelda adventure. So I think that's going to give it the edge over it. It felt it felt pretty safe. But also remember with the whole thing with Breath of the Wild 2 is the expectations are so high. It could be kind of a, a double-edged sword where if it comes out and it's not this incredible game, that could actually work against it. Because people are going to be like, what happened with Breath of the Wild 2? I don't get it. It's not, it's not this amazing, incredible game. I mean, I feel like it will be because it seems like the, the team obviously is super talented. Yeah, right. Know what they're doing. And they've also been given a lot of time for this game um, from what we've seen. So I I expect a lot out of Breath of the Wild, too, as I think a lot of people Mm -hmm. are as well. But, yeah, I agree because it has this big blowout game coming. That's going to be Breath of the Wild, too. Um, They can put out remasters and stuff, but still point to Breath of the Wild, too, as like, you know, this is coming. This is going to be the big release that's going to cap off the whole thing. Whereas you're right. We didn't have an Odyssey, too. So I, I, I think Zelda when it's all done. And I actually think the Zelda is just, it sounds weird because Mario technically markets better overall, but like, I feel like in the gaming landscape for a lot of us online, Zelda is uh, more appealing. I would say to a lot of people when they market it and they show off the games and all this. Yes. I feel like Mario is kind of like that comfort food. You know, it's going to be there. You know, it's going to be quality and you're always anticipating it. Zelda, you just have more, excitement built around it it has more of that i'll use core appeal because it's slightly more adult oriented i use the term adult loosely because obviously children also the the themes around it and stuff yeah yeah Yeah, it can have dark themes it can have dark storylines even if you don't fully grasp them but yeah zelda definitely just has more excitement especially you know for like individuals like us where you know we're older and it just generally it just generates more hype and excitement online because everyone wants to see what's next for zelda mario is just like great another quality mario game but zelda is something that's it's changing and you're constantly anticipating what nintendo is going to do next with this franchise and how it's going to continue to evolve in exciting new ways i'm excited i think this is gonna be fun we we still don't know what nintendo's doing at e3 yet which uh, you mentioned before in a podcast is weird because they would have by now so we'll We'll see. I maybe this week. This week coming up, we're getting pretty close. Maybe they'll announce their plans for a direct or or something, and maybe we'll get some key art or something we can go off of. You know, maybe maybe we want to, we'll see like some Zelda stuff with some Metroid stuff or something in there. We'll we'll see. We'll see what we get there. Let's but hope, uh, let's hope. yeah, exciting stuff. That make sure you guys check out Nate over at Nate the Hate. I got the link down uh, below in the description to his channel. And we'll be seeing you guys next time. I'm sure we'll all get together at some point for Nintendo E3 predictions and all of this ahead of e3 whenever nintendo announces that so make sure you guys stay tuned for it we'll see you next time